Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am Monet and you are watching Life is Monet. So I finished this book recently and I have been sitting on how I feel about this book because it is hands down the most fucking ridiculous book that I've read all year. And I don't know how to rate it. I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know what the fuck I read. Um, so I decided to read the reviews, like the five star and one star reviews of this book to see if the people who read it can help me decipher what the hell this was. Because I don't know if this was a masterpiece or like a parody of a story. So I'm not exactly sure if I can tell you what the story is about. So I'm just gonna tell you what happens and then we'll get to the reviews. So we have this female mother in this story. Her name is Tiny and Tiny is pregnant and she is convinced that her baby is an owl baby. That's what she keeps calling it. And that um, it was conceived by her female owl lover and she tries to tell her husband this over and over again and the people around her but they are dog people of dog families and dog babies and so they don't understand what it means for her to be carrying an owl baby and this is very much literary fiction through and through because some of the stuff in this book is just so fucking ridiculous it makes no sense but um her husband tells the doctors and the family members that sometimes she just gets obsessive like this and that to not pay her any attention um, but in the beginning of the book she's very much in tune with this owl baby and she is like connected to it she can talk to it communicate with it she can understand it and all these different things and the doctors are not hearing her concerns and her husband is also very passive over how she feels uh, but fast forward throughout the story she gives birth to this owl baby and the doctors and the nurses everybody's repulsed by this baby for whatever reason because it does not look it looks very deformed it does not look the way a normal child should look and so they take her baby and they put it in this like incubator and they're telling her that you know like the baby might not survive because it's incredibly tiny and um the bone density is just very weak and like all these different medical complications is happening with her daughter she runs and like snatches her baby out of uh the glass container and all the tubes and takes her home and the husband's family is like panicking because they want to blame her for the possibility of the baby dying because she took like she refused the the hospital care but when the husband comes home and he's like trying to connect with his wife and see his baby for the first time uh, because he was away while she gave birth he's also repulsed and like they kind of flip sides where she is enraptured and like in love with this deformed owl baby and the husband is pretty much praying for the baby to rest in peace he wants it to um find solemn and tranquility in the ground um so we have to deal with that balance for a little bit throughout the book and then the husband becomes obsessed with fixing this baby. So he starts to look for all these doctors and researchers and just psychologists and all these different like study trials that he could put the baby in that would help the baby um, perform normally. But the mom Tiny is totally against this. She wants to raise her owl baby in a way in which the baby can um, live its truest form and be its truest self within society and not be forced to conform um but the reader as you're reading the story you know that something is terribly wrong with the baby and that the baby is not going to act uh what society in a way that society would deem normal at all um and the baby's gonna have a lot of growing complications because of just the way the baby is um you don't know if the baby is literally an owl but she keeps calling it an owl baby um so as the, the baby's like growing up and like we watch Tiny raise this baby and the way that she describes like just breastfeeding it um, and, and the cognitive development that this owl baby goes through is very like uncomfortable and disturbing and like she describes the baby's mouth with like a beak suckling at her nipple. It is incredibly uncomfortable when you're reading the story and at some point like my brain just stopped trying to figure out what was literal and what was literary fiction about the story because it could have very well been allegories for something else but it was just too mentally exhausting to try to figure out the author's tone and like the purpose of the story. So I just took it for what it was at face value. Um, I did not, this is very much no thoughts head empty because I could not even begin to, to translate this component. We see Tiny interact with her owl lover several times throughout the story and Tiny comes to the conclusion that um, 
for the sake of her baby and stability it's better for her to just raise her baby with her dog husband and then when the husband becomes obsessive with trying to fix the baby she decides like she's gonna love the baby more than she loves her husband or any other relationship in her life because the baby is what matters and that she's gonna be the only person to really accept this baby the father let's go with the name so the mom names the baby Chouette, which is French for owl, but everyone else in the book calls her Charlotte. So the mom calls her Chouette and the father calls her Charlotte and he tries to get her into all these different special schools. But when she goes to school, she is not communicative. She doesn't talk. She doesn't act like any of the other kids, what Tiny would call the dog kids. And she attacks the kids in the school and so multiple schools kick her out and there's literally one scene where the principal is like you got to get your daughter out of here we don't want her back and the mom is asking like what happened and like why are they kicking Shuet out of school and the this principal's like well the teacher told Shuet to do something or Charlotte to do something and then Charlotte gave a vulgar reaction the teacher was afraid she backed up and fell and Tiny's like what does that have to do with my daughter and the principal's like well it's not about what happened before she fell it's about what happened after she fell it's actually too disturbing for me to read I'm just gonna tell you like that the teacher needed 13 stitches and she's gonna be out of work for a while and I just need you to sign here take this copy and get your baby get up out of here like nobody else wanted to interact with this baby at all and you start to realize that uh the type of owl that sh this baby is is an apex predator and so its natural instincts is to be incredibly volatile and um to be a, to be an apex predator and so you're watching tiny protect this baby um and every she's like blaming everyone around her for not allowing her child to be um their natural self but the child is like fucking dangerous okay so like people are literally risking their lives like there's one point in the book where she's like oh let's just go to church because church people have to accept us uh for the way that we are and like their entire religion is built around accepting people and saving their souls and bringing them to god until the baby literally attacks the driver of the car that's taking them to church and tiny's literally like oh well we can't go back to this church because she's gonna be dramatic about what happened and she's gonna turn everybody against us like she's fucking bleeding everywhere your baby just attacked her she needs hospital care and you're talking about yeah like she's screaming too loud for the amount of blood that she's losing and i was just reading this book like what is happening like what is this the father years later finds this doctor that's gonna put artificial intelligence into charlotte and it's gonna make Charlotte normal again. <laughs> like this is some, like he's at his wit's end. He has tried everything to save this baby. Everyone keeps turning his baby away. The trials are not working. So I think they put like some type of artificial like technology or chip into Chouette and Chouette starts to mimic what it is to be human and she starts to talk for the first time in years but she's really just repeating kind of like a parrot like <laughs> she's performing in a way like she, that a parrot would just regurgitating what you're telling her to say and tiny loses it she's like no i want my baby to be her normal self even though that wasn't really normal or healthy in any way like she was fucking dangerous but she starts to like try to bring the, the owl baby back to being the owl baby because she does not like watching her daughter develop in a healthy dog way or to communicate the way that dog people do and so she starts to like drown her baby at some points throughout the book and it's like short wiring or short circuiting the artificial intelligence that's been installed into this little girl or owl I don't even fucking know at this point and now the baby's kind of like <laughs> so jacked up because it has moments where it's pretending to be a normal dog child and like it's being its natural self and basically towards the end of this book the baby like short circuits and like puts her beak into the father's eye socket and then like pops out the eyeball and swallows it and then it's like all hell breaks loose in the book at that point because at this point it's almost as if tiny is the the problem because she is it went from being like accepting your child the way that they naturally are to enabling their predatory apex predatory uh characteristics and it became like okay girl like maybe like yes love her the way that she is but like also understand that like your child is a danger to fucking society and like people are ending up in the hospital every time they interact with her maybe so like you start to kind of turn on the mom because this becomes very unhealthy and she becomes like I don't know a villain like she becomes obsessive with this and so when the father gets out of the hospital he comes home and he's like yeah we're gonna get you back into therapy it was working your mom messed it up and they almost want to arrest her for like enabling or t for like putting 
the baby, the owl baby at like risk. I know this is like fucking ridiculous at this point, but like this is literally what happened in this book. And so they kind of like come together and the mom, Tiny, is like, maybe she could just pop out his other eye and swallow it and then he would just be blind. And that went from making him completely blind when he got out of the hospital to like slitting his throat with the beak of the owl. Like it was, it was ridiculous. So the father ended up dying at the end of this book. The mom died at the end of this book. And the baby just kind of like went off into the fucking woods to be in like the natural habitat of society. I, I don't know what the hell this book was about. It could be a masterpiece. It could be. But <laughs> it is beyond my mental capacity. It is beyond my IQ to know it. Because I felt like this was a joke. Like, was the baby really a fucking owl? Are these really dog people? Because she's calling them dog people, but they're not described as dogs. They're, they're like humans. Like, it's speculative fiction. It's literary speculative fiction. So, like, nothing about them portrays being a dog other than her calling them a dog but she describes her baby her owl baby as an owl but not the dog people they're just called dog people but the baby is described as an owl by the mother but it's not described as an owl by other individuals they're just repulsed at whatever the fuck the baby looks like and the owl lover that just kept coming back into the story that was kind of like this deadbeat sperm donor deadbeat cross interspecies lover I don't fucking know let's just read the reviews and see if other people made more sense of this shit than I did I feel like I'm gonna start with the five star reviews because why not this is a novel that bombards the senses I agree <laughs> this is a novel that defies genres I agree this is a novel that challenges your notions of what a good life is or even a good enough life this is a novel that challenges your ideas of what suburban oppression does to women, the queer, the psychiatric, and the physically disabled. Okay. You, you might make a case for that. This is a suburban horror mix with psychological insights, sociological understandings, and a trip to the dark fierce parts that lay within us all. It was fucking brilliant and brave. <laughs> this is a novel that will discuss tantalize challenge and an anecdote to the shame that lies dormant in so many of us they're clearly like a genius like they're a prodigy because their brain understood when minds could not i could see i could see where you were going with that but um what this is the first time a novel has really conveyed to me, not on an intellectual level, but on a deep emotional one, the experience of falling desperately in love with your child to the point of devoting, <laughs> to the point of devoting your whole self to them. Love that is strenuous and asymmetrical and important. Motherhood that is cacophonous and mucky and jubilant, sharp claws and soft feathers. I love this book. I love this conviction, its ferocity, its bravery, and its humor. One of this year's best for sure, five stars. I'm gonna have to let you have it. I'm gonna have to let you have it. I figured that I would read this and it would be fine, but not really my kind of thing. And I would write a carefully phrased and polite review and that would be that. But no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I had to go and genuinely enjoy this book for its unsentimental tone, its magical realism style, the musicality of its language, and the goddamn ease of its storytelling. It's just lovely. I mean, it isn't hearts and flowers lovely. You don't say. It's a book about a fucking baby apex predator, but okay. <laughs> the book is riddled with dark predatory scenes, but it's not horror. It's just nature i call bullshit i i was scared i was i was worried about the people that she was attacking and every time the father kept forcing her back into these schools and she was like letting her go like baby you know your your child is a danger to society your child is a danger to mankind okay love her for who she is but understand who she is and maybe keep her away from people that are lower on the food chain it is indeed about a woman named Tiny who gives birth to an owl baby called Chouette and you're welcome to read it as a metaphor of challenges of raising a special needs child against the callousness of the world and paternal disgust but for me it's way more fun to take it at face value. You could read it uh, as a representation of a disabled child but I would find that to be a disservice 
to that community personally. Um, I would not put this in the recs <laughs> recommendations for representation because the disgust that people looked upon the child as was not warranted, but the fear that they had of this owl baby was warranted. And I don't think that we should feed into that perspective. Um, but comment down below and let me know where you stand because I, I disagree. I call bullshit on that one too. A child born to hunt whose tantrums are not like all the other girls, a wild creature from whom a mother cannot expect to receive any recognizable signs of affection, who cannot communicate their needs as a human baby or dog baby does, whose inner life will always be a complete mystery. Like what was the point of the whole family dying at the end and the baby just going off to just exist in the same world that currently doesn't accept her and is currently fucking terrified of her. Like, why why that ending then? Like, did the mother's love kill her? Like, she loved her baby so much she died of it? Okay, I'm going to the one star ratings for this book because, um, yeah, let's <laughs> see. This one flat out says no, just no. Um, I feel like I agree. This was a waste of paper if you ask me. This was not for me. I finished it but now I feel stressed out whenever I see a picture of an owl. Same. I'm definitely about to unhaul this book because it's, it's giving dangerous. It's giving I'm not safe even with the picture of the apex predator looking at me. It has to go. I don't know what I'm going to rate this book because it wasn't bad. It was just utterly ridiculous and I, <laughs> I want to give it to someone else so it can stress them the hell out and I can be free of this owl baby. This book was very strange. Perhaps I just couldn't make sense of the conceit of the book. Same, 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 same. But either way, it definitely didn't land with me. At times I thought the writing had a very nice and somewhat ethereal quality to it. But most of the time I found it to be somewhat grating for its diction. There were choices, blending some French words and phrases that didn't make sense to me at all. All in all, I'll say this book just wasn't for me. I feel like these reviews are very like kind um, and gently worded for what we all suffered through while reading this book. Tried so hard to finish this to see if I could figure out what the rave reviews were about. Only got halfway through before I absolutely couldn't keep going. Spent most of the book nauseous and wincing. Girl, same. <laughs> the owl baby seems totally pointless to the story. Like 100% could have just been a human baby instead. Yes, it could have been. It could have just been a baby with special needs. Like, it really could have been. And like, you could have took out all that other shit. The owl just makes it more disturbing and deeply confusing. I could say more, but I'll just leave it at that. I do not recommend this book. This is a very bizarre book. The writing is reasonably good, I agree, but the story itself is so strange that by about halfway through, I just could not go on reading. This is about a woman who bears an owl child instead of a dog child, which it appears other people are. The child is, in fact, more owl than it is child. I am not sure exactly Exactly what the point of the whole thing is but while it may be to somebody's taste it definitely wasn't to mine. Honestly these reviews are not helping me decide what I feel about this book. Uh, I think I'm gonna remain indifferent. <laughs> I think that I'm gonna be in the middle for a while. I literally don't know what to rate this because I feel like if I give it one star that's a testament to like the the writing quality which wasn't bad. Some of the literary depictions and like speculative aspects of the book was not bad. I just don't understand the point of it all. What was the reason? I don't know. Like I want someone else to read this. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mail this book to one of my friends and see if they can decipher. And it's such a short book like 205 pages of, of mind-boggling ridiculous shit. This probably when I edit it is gonna seem like a rant video. Um this I have not been this upset at a book in a while. Like I want to talk to the publisher. I want to talk to the editor. I want to talk to the, I want to talk to anyone who heard this plot and was like, yeah, girl, yeah, do it. Like, huh? <laughs> I feel like even pitching it to me to get me to read it was like, I want to know, is the baby really an owl? Was it truly an owl? Were these people really dogs? Was the mom really the problem? Was she enabling her baby 
did her baby really eat the father's eyeball? Like, well, I guess she did because it was down in her little, her tiny little belly and the father came back with a little, a little pirate eye patch. So I guess, yeah, she definitely ate the father's eye. But like, why have the book be a parallel between owls and dogs? I have so many questions. Um, read this at your own peril. I don't know if I can tell you to spend um, $24 on it. This was actually a gift that was sent to me earlier this year. So um, no loss for me there. I didn't spend any money on this one. But uh, if you do, good luck to you. Uh, may the odds be ever in your favor because this one was a stumper.